Well, hello, hello, my friends. This is S. Anthony Thomas. This is the S. Anthony Thomas Show. Episode number 149. 149. All right. You know what, my friends? Let's just get right into business. I need to talk to you about this. I had a friend who told the truth, but the truth was so implausible. He got in a lot of trouble with his significant other. She didn't believe him. Fortunately, I was there to see the thing happen. And when I told her that it happened, because I have a reputation for being honest, she just completely went, oh, he said so. Oh, OK. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. You, so you saw it. Yes. You saw it. Yes. You saw it. You saw it. I said, yeah, I was there. She goes, oh, OK, OK, OK. And she believed him. Because I tend not to lie to people, you know, not trying to make myself sound awesome. (laughs) Just kidding. I am awesome. (laughs) Uh, Moving on. (laughs) But that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about. When the truth actually sounds like a lie. Right. And I have to be honest with you. The people that I blame the most for it, the people that I blame the most for it is the liars themselves because they lie so often. They've covered all possible actions that could happen, all implausibilities that could happen and lock their signature on it as a lie. So when something happens that's outrageous and unbelievable happens to you and you express that thing to people, people just assume you're lying because usually that's the excuse that liars use. They've ruined weird things happening to us. They've ruined it and they made us so we sound like liars when we're telling the truth. And you know what I'm talking about. You know that old trope about kids. Oh, the dog ate my homework. The dog ate my homework. Right now, you know, the kids were lying when they said that. And that's not cool. You know, it's not cool because eventually some kid actually had a dog eat his or her homework, had to explain that to the teacher. But there have been so many lying kids using that excuse. The teacher just automatically assumed the kid was lying. Um, Mrs. Johnson, my dog ate my homework. You know, daggone well, little Timmy, your dog did not eat your homework. You're lying. You're getting a week's detention, right? And then he opens up his book bag and shows her the chewed up paper. And she goes, oh, so you're going to, so you put in so much work to write on some papers and have the dog chew it up. If you were to put that much effort into your actual work, you wouldn't have to come up with this lie about your dog chewing your homework. Now you're getting two weeks detention, right? You do the complain to your parents and your parents are looking at you like I can't believe you went to that school and embarrassed us by lying to the teacher now she's going to think we're raising a liar you're not a liar and all the whole time you're doing that two weeks detention when you come home you're two weeks grounded how about that give me those whatever games you're playing give them to me you can't have those for two weeks that's right right and the poor kid's telling the truth the whole time meanwhile the dog's sitting in the corner like yeah I bit up your homework. Next time when I say I want to go outside and play, you better put that phone down and you go outside and play with me. Your friends are cool, but I'm the dog and I live here. I'm more important. You better pick up that Frisbee, run into the backyard with me and throw that Frisbee until I get tired of chasing the Frisbee. And I'll let you know when I'm tired of chasing the Frisbee because I'll let you throw the Frisbee. I won't get the Frisbee. I'll walk back into the house and then you'll have to get the Frisbee. That's when you know when I'm done with the Frisbee. And if you ever re- reject my time again and I decide I want to play with you again I'm going to chew up some more homework and you're going to get in even more prop more trouble because they're going, to be like, they're going to be saying to you oh so you're trying that again and you're probably going to get a month's detention and a month's of being grounded yeah that's right and also to teach you a lesson I'm not going to say what happened but I would just say you probably don't want to put your shoes right on next time you might want to shake them out or maybe throw them away okay I'm not going to say what happened but you don't have to take me outside to go to the bathroom now okay Timmy (laughs) that's a lot of hatred from that imaginary dog isn't it (laughs) you know what I'm saying but that's the thing man sometimes something happens to you when you think it's so outlandish that people are going to believe you. I lived in Los Angeles, right? I was working at an in an office job. You know what I'm saying? And I, this is a, this is a million and a half years ago. Obviously, I'm working at an office job, and the bank froze my bank account. Froze it. I hadn't done anything. There was a glitch in the system. And because it affected me, a lowly customer, and didn't affect them, the mighty bank, they kind of drag their feet, drag their feet. 
drag their feet fixing the problem. Three of the longest days ever. I was just trying to live off of the cash I had in my pocket. Luckily for me at the time, the Burger King hamburger, whatever, the, the, the Whopper was like a dollar at a, at the time, right? You, just, you go across, I could walk, walk across the street and get a Whopper. Didn't use my car, didn't use my car, didn't want to touch my car because I had a tank of gas and I was going to milk that tank of gas. So I just let the, I just I just walked to places I needed to go to. Wasn't going to mess around till I got my money back. Right. I had just enough money to go over there to get a Whopper. I could have I could get two meals a day and my meals consisted of a Whopper and that courtesy cup. And that courtesy cup is one of the best things ever. I didn't know that was a thing. I don't even know if that's still a thing. But back then, if you bought a Whopper, you got really want some want some water and they would give you this little small cup that I didn't even know they had back there and they'd give you a cup of water with the big uh, with the uh, whopper which was hilarious and the big the McDonald's it's okay, a courtesy cup they give you that of course a lot of people did not did not appreciate the courtesy and they immediately walked around the corner I don't know why they had the soda machine around the corner where they couldn't see it. But people go, thanks a lot. I'm now going to walk out the store. I'm definitely not going to open the door, dump out this water, and then fill it up with free soda. I'm definitely not going to do that. <laughs> and they all did that. I didn't. That often. <laughs> don't judge me. Shut up. Like I said, the brain froze my money. I was broke. Shut up. Right? So it's three days. Three days, and those three days were at the end of the month. And when the month ends, what happens after that? The next month starts, doesn't it? And what does the landlord want on the first of the month? Hmm? You know what it is. It's called this new thing called um the rent. Now, fortunately for me, this landlord had a five day grace period that they would give you. I never used the five day grace period. I always paid on the first. I'd walk down to his office. Here you go, sir. Bang. Oh, that's fantastic. And he'd be happy. You're the only person that pays on the first. You're the only person that pays on the first. Everyone else waits till five o'clock on the fifth. That's what they would do. But this time I had to go down on the first and say to him, ah, oh, the bank froze my money. <laughs> and he's looking at me. Now, keep in mind, I have been paying the rent on the first, first, first and first. And this is the first time I said that the bank froze my money. And he looked at me and he goes, hmm, well, you have a five day grace period anyway. Check back in with me on the 5th. But I could tell in his face, he trusted me, but it was kind of pushing at the outside of the trust. He was, it was like trust, but verify. Trust, man. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then another person came into the office. And as it turns out, he was in the same bank that I was in, and it was the same thing was affecting him. Now, what are the odds of two people in the same apartment building have their uh, accounts frozen because of a glitch? But when he walked in, keep in mind, I had just said that the bank froze my money. And he was believing me, not believing me, but believing me, right? Just like, like just a little bit right there with the believing. This dude came in. Oh, so you heard us, Anthony, say that, huh? You're not slick, you bad. You better have my rent by the... Did not believe him, but he was telling the truth. Now, he didn't believe that guy because why? That guy had lied so many times that when he now told the truth, he didn't believe him. Fortunately, on the third, boop, everything was back in line. I walked back into the office. I gave the dude the money. He goes, of course, I believed you. <laughs> and I said, if you believe me, why do you have on your dry erase board, beat S. Anthony up and throw his, throw him out? <laughs> He says, no, no, that was that was a, something, that's a, a script I'm working on called Beat Up S. Anthony and Throw Him Out of the Building. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, can you erase that, please? Yeah, I'm going to wait about a month and see whether or not the bank uh, freezes your account again, and then I'll decide whether to erase it. <laughs> okay, that part's not true. He didn't have that on the dry erase board. <laughs> I said that for entertainment purposes. <laughs> Don't judge me. Shut up. It's a podcast. <laughs> right? Sometimes it's an outrageous thing that is so crazy, so out of the loop that he. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna. Uh... 
Yeah, I could talk about this. I could talk about this. Imagine if you have an attractive maid working in the hotel and she passes out. She falls backward onto the bed. The husband walks over, starts giving her mouth to mouth and CPR. The wife walks in. She sees the hot maid on her back on the bed, the husband on top of her with her hand, his hands on her chest and his mouth on her. And she wants to kill him. He's trying to save the woman's life and his own life at the same time. And this is astounding. Now, she's so busy mad at him, thinking that he's on top of this. this la- the lady's passed out. As it turned out, it was just, uh, I think she had low sugar or something like that. So it wasn't like she 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 was fine afterwards. We had gone back to the hotel a bunch of times after that. And she was cool. And she had, you know, her she got her medical situation taken care of. So as it turns out, it wasn't, it was kind of a dangerous situation. But uh, she's she turned out she's, she's fine. I mean, I haven't seen, I haven't seen her in like, 20 something years but uh the last time i saw her she was fine but back to the whole thing why did she assume he was on top of the really attractive maid doing something wrong because he had cheated before she had literally walked in on him with a maid in a similar circumstance But this time when his hands were on her chest and his mouth was attached to her, let's just say it wasn't nothing wrong with her blood sugar. It was nothing wrong with her nothing. The only thing wrong was the fact that he was on top of a hot maid and he didn't realize his wife was going to show up early to surprise him. Oh, she surprised him all right. (laughs) Oh, she surprised him. (laughs) But in this particular occasion... He was telling the truth. Now, granted, it's a big stretch. If you're, if there's a really attractive maid sprawled out on the bed and you're on top of her, you got your mouth, you got your hand on her chest and your mouth on her. I mean, what's the first thing you're going to think of if, if you see that and you're a wife? I mean, even if, even if the guy is Captain Fidelity, even for even just a fraction of a second, you're going to be like, okay, I have to believe him. I have to believe him. I have to believe him. And she'll ask that question. Um, is everything okay? I've heard, um, is everything okay? I was at a girlfriend's house. She has two of her friends over. Attractive ladies. I think one was a dancer. This is New York, by the way. New York in the late 80s. One is a dancer. And the other one... Some kind of entertainer, I don't know, but they were like really fit, really attractive, fit women. She's telling them, oh, he's so this, he's saying all this really nice stuff about me, which is great. I meet her friends. Friends a dancer, the other one's a singer, something. Whatever it was, they were really attractive ladies. She's giving me good, oh, he's this, he's that, he's this. She goes down, says, I'm just going to go down to the bodega and get us some whatever, some kind of snacks or some crap. I said, no, I'll go. You can sit here with your friends. No, that's okay. You know, they wanted to meet you because I talk about you all the time. And what she didn't realize was her friends wanted something that belonged to her. I'm not going to say what that thing was. But you're here, but the thing that they wanted is the thing that's talking to you right now. And they made that very clear. How clear did they make it? I try to keep this podcast clean, so I can't tell you. <laughs> and I'm sitting there going, I'm like, yo, I thought at first I thought it was a joke. Right. And then, then the second thing I thought was, oh, I see what's going on. So at first I thought it was a joke. Like I was like, yeah, okay, whatever you want to do, whatever. Yeah, sure. Both of y'all want to, ah, ha, ha, ha. okay, that's funny. And then they kept going. I'm like, okay, it's not funny anymore. And I'm like, oh, God, they ain't kidding. Right? And I was like, oh, this is, oh, man, I can't believe her friends are doing this. And then after that, which was the weirdest part, I started thinking, wait a second. She has her friends all up on me like this because, oh, I see what it is. She goes outside. You understand? 
And then when they, then I go, oh yeah, she's going to be back. And uh, yeah, they, first of all, what I need to do, what I, when I do what I do, I, it's going to take longer than it takes to go to some bodega, get some food and come back. I mean, huh, I mean, come on now. <laughs> Even as an old man, I take, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Not to brag, but <laughs> back to the story. So I'm like, hey, I'm getting, I get mad at him. Hey man, I don't know how you guys get down, but I don't appreciate you guys coming on to me like this right so what's she gonna do come busting back in the door and then you know when she comes back in i'm gonna tell her right now that if she don't want to be with me she can just dump me she don't have to try to set me up and they're like no she's not trying to set you up we just wanted i was like oh she's not trying to set me up yeah y'all just really wanted it oh right now she comes back in and as she comes back in one of them is sitting on my lap and the other one is leaning over the table trying to show me some stuff that, that rhymes with jests. <laughs> right? Now, keep in mind, I have fought these ladies off. I am i don't want to lose. I'm not a cheater. I've never cheated in my life. I'm not going to start now. Now, granted, if I had met either one of them but and never knew her, and then it would have been on like popcorn. But I was in a relationship with this lady. You know what I'm saying? And last thing I, I want, hi, the News New York comedian who... Had a hot girlfriend. When she went to the bodega, her other two hot girlfriends tried to get it on with him. He said, what the heck got it on with him? She came back and killed him. Film at 11. No, no, I don't want to be on the New York news like that. <laughs> right? So she comes back. The lady's sitting on my lap. The other one's, you know, leaning over the table. She walks in and she goes, so is everything okay? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. She goes, mm-hmm. She goes, oh, yeah. I just, you know, I just, uh. Uh, I forgot what she said, but she had some lame excuse for sitting in my lap. And the other one had a lame excuse for leaning over the table, putting her, you know, chest yummies in my face. But the thing was, I was like, hey, uh, and they lied. They lied. And I told the truth. And she believed me, thank goodness. Thank goodness, man. I mean, I, she, 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 I mean, that particular girlfriend, man, I mean, Oof. Now, fortunately, I had been in, had a, a history of telling her the truth because that could have been bad, you know. But what she didn't believe was that I didn't flirt with him, right? And I told her I did not flirt with him. You had to have look, look at them. There's no way you didn't flirt with them. Now, under normal circumstances, a guy probably would have flirted with the ladies. She's blaming me for them. So all of a sudden they're looking at me. She's looking at me like, you must have flirted with them. Look, I know you didn't cheat on me, but I don't like you flirting. All but all that crap. Reading me up and down. Like she she wasn't mad enough to drop me, but she was mad that, you know, she didn't think I cheated on him. She just thought I was flirting. And I wasn't. And I told her I wasn't, and she didn't believe me. Meanwhile, her two friends are behind me, behind her while she's yelling at me. I'm not, they were like doing stuff with their hands to indicate things and, you know, doing stuff with their, their faces to indicate things behind her back. I'm like, I'm looking at them and I'm like, is this a sitcom? This, this literally is the kind of thing where if it was filmed, it would look like it was in a badly written sitcom where the person is being yelled at by the people behind them and making like obscene gestures about what they want to do. And she turned around and look at them and they'd automatically freeze as if they weren't doing anything. And the second she turned back to me, they're doing it again. And I'm going, why am I not wearing sunglasses right now? This would really solve a lot of problems. Now, as it turned out, everything was cool. That relationship was cool. It went on for quite a while afterwards. We broke up because, well, I'm not going to say why we broke up, but it rhymes with she's really, really jealous, even though I didn't do anything. Uh, <laughs> right? But that's one of those things that's really, really a weird thing. Right? When you When you get blamed for something that you didn't do. When people don't believe you when you're telling the truth. Because sometimes the truth sounds like a lie. And when the truth sounds like a lie, it sucks. Because you get in trouble for something you didn't do. So, what I would say to you, my friends, is this. If you see a liar, smack him. Okay, I can't advocate that because then y'all might actually go and smack somebody and then I'll get blamed for it. Do not smack the liars. Don't do that. I'll smack them. Okay, I can't even do that because I want up having to fight people that I'm, I'm, I don't want to do that. That's that, you know, I got to fight. Okay, listen, how about this? We're just going to agree that we're going to be honest. 
most of the time. I'm not going to say honest all the time because you're not going to be honest all the time. Nobody's honest all the time. And if you say you're honest all the time, you just lied. Okay. So let's, let's just, just, let's just, I, I personally, I've already taken the pledge to be honest the overwhelming majority of the time. Okay. And I want you to take it with me. You will take a pledge right now that you promise that you're going to be honest the overwhelming majority of the time. Okay. Unless, you know, unless lying will keep you from getting you behind whooped. Like if somebody's like, you know, says, is there's a situation where lying will keep you from getting beaten down where well, you can lie it in, right? Or, you know, if it's a lying is going to keep you from getting physically harmed or keep you out of trouble, situation where you like get from point A to point B, you won't have to ever go back to point A. Okay, you can lie it in. Stuff, stuff like that. But for the most part, we're going to be honest, okay? Cool. And there's something I want you to be honest about. I want you to be honest about how much you love this show. So I need you to subscribe to this podcast. I want you to be honest about how much you love this show to other people and say, man, you got to listen to S. Anthony Thomas and the S. Anthony Thomas show because honestly, this dude's awesome. And I want you to be honest when you give them rate and review this program because you and I both know five stars is the best. (laughs) That's the best way. (laughs) Honestly. (laughs) And I'm going to be honest with you. I love talking to you. Thanks for the feedback. Thanks for listening. Thanks for recommending the show to people. Thanks for all the kindness, my friends. I really, really do appreciate it in all seriousness. And I will see you again next time. You dig? Honestly. Take care.